Okay, call the meeting to order at uh, 13 after four. Roll call. Um, everybody is here. Um, Do we know who Eileen Cogroff is? Pardon? Yeah, is that an attendee? That is an attendee. Eileen, can you hear us? She's on mute. She's on mute. You're talking to me again or somebody else? No. Oh. There's someone else. Okay. Please. Uh, who's Eileen? Asked to unmute. Yeah. What happens if you push asked to unmute? Hello? Okay. Well, Eileen is attending the meeting. And Eileen, if you can hear us and you can introduce yourself, that would be great. Um, you are muted. Are muted, yeah. And if not, I think okay, we well, proceed. Um, okay, so everybody's present. Um, uh, we have two sets of minutes before us. Uh, one's already been approved. The first, the first one been approved. Okay, from the um, special meeting. No, from the meeting before that. But the, that, we need to approve the minutes from the regular, the special meeting. That was very right. Special. Okay, um, that's correct. So any. Um, it's rather a short little uh, thing. Anybody got any comments? Oh, entertain a motion. So moved. Okay. Second. Any comments? All those in favor? Aye. Aye. Okay. Move it ahead. Here we are. Find it now. There we are. Okay. Okay. So um. Do we have any um, anybody from the public who wishes to comment? Anybody on the Zoom who wishes to comment? Uh, I guess not. Um, does anybody have any announcements? Okay, let's go on to new business then. So um, let's start out with... Um, uh, uh, by saying that I did sit down with uh, uh, Megan earlier this week uh, and had a conversation with both Megan and with uh, her boss, John Reiner. And so we uh, um, uh, uh, laid out a, um, uh, the, the uh, agenda for, 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 for today. And the main purpose of that meeting was to simply uh, have a, or to begin a conversation about um, our potential role as we go forward. And so that's um, a, a number uh, D here um, on, on the list. So um, let's start with A. Um, what do you have to uh, update us with uh, the Connecticut Deep Grants? Yeah, certainly. So Zell just, I think, wanted to make sure everyone was clear on what applications I put in. I talked about these at the previous two meetings. So we had the Climate Action Plan that application and then we also had the application for um, assessment and design potentially green infrastructure at Pequannock Plains Park to address flooding. Just wanted to check in make sure everyone was good didn't have any questions about those. Um, Deep let us know a few days ago is that we should receive notifications about whether or not we were success successful by the end of March. Okay that far out okay okay. Good. Now, um, do I remember something about a heat study this summer and, a, and an intern on all that? And that's in place. Or that's <laughs> that was funded. That was funded. That right? was funded. Yeah. And, that's listed under old business. And that's old business. <laughs> I'm <laughs> Frank. I did the same. I have a list of things. And then I started um, to try to parse out what was good. We start with old first. We want to know it. <laughs> I can rearrange this. <laughs> that's regular. Well, I'm trying to. I'm doing this. I'm trying to figure out. Oh, that's extreme. Be new extreme. Business, old business. Yeah, yeah, like, yeah. okay. We should just be at one of Lance's business. <laughs> Good. Megan's new business corner. Perfect. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> okay. So, um, any 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 questions about this? Um, I, do uh, you want to just keep us posted then on that? On the, yeah, I'll keep yeah, posted. Yeah. Um, I can tell you about some other things I've been working on under the sure. realm of new business. Sure. If folks are interested. Yeah, yeah, please. Um, 
so many thanks to Mickey. Uh, given his nomination, I was voted in as a new member of the Long Island Sound Study Citizens Advisory oh, Committee. So that went through successfully. Many thanks to Mickey to helping for helping facilitate that. So that's in addition. Um, last night I gave a presentation at the library. It was supported by the Groton Pollinator Pathway and the Conservation Commission. It focused on invasive species and their impacts on pollinators. So it was a it was a good way to meet some additional folks and do a fun educational event talking all about something that uh, has really been an interest of mine throughout my career invasive species. So um, I think it was very successful. Successful. I'm having a really hard time with that word today. <laughs> um, we had about 25 people show up, which oh, wow. Good. for the middle of the week and seven o'clock at night, I thought was pretty positive. Right. Now let's use that as a guinea pig. Mm -hmm. Who sponsored it? Groton Pollinator Pathway and the Groton Conservation Commission. The Town of Groton Conservation Commission. Correct. And it was uh, advertised where? Um, so Kristen DeStante, I know she posted, right, so she is on She's the Conservation Commission and she is really the, the force behind the Pollinator Pathway Group. So she has a Facebook page for the Pollinator Pathway Group she shared it to. Right, meaningless. They shared it through Groton Open Space and GCA. I think both shared it out, maybe yes. not GCA. I know Groton I Open didn't. Space. Yeah. Did we get it? GCA? Yeah, you <laughs> Don't I'm read gonna, your YC. I'm going to be in trouble. Oh. Yeah. <laughs> the, the point of the babble is I never heard about it. Okay. And the reason I'm using it as, as a uh, guinea pig is saying, think about other things that we might want to do. Mm -hmm. Is how do you get the word out better than it's been getting out? Yeah. And maybe it's everywhere. Facebook is meaningless. Whatever we call it now, Twitter and that sort of stuff. That doesn't mean that it ha doesn't have to be used. Sure. It just means that it's meaningless, at least in my world. And and um, I think a lot of people, even the kids, don't look at Facebook. Um, so you think about bigger, better, something in the day. Uh, how do, how do we do this sort of a thing? Is you're setting us up perfectly for the patch or agenda or item. Yeah. The patch. Patch. Yeah, set them up. <laughs> yeah, it's that's the trouble. We've talked yeah. about it before. Is that yeah, there's so bloody many pathways. It has yeah. to be in yeah. 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 I know Kristen did targeted outreach to some of the garden clubs, thinking that those were likely folks that had an interest in the subjects. Um, who attended? And who were your, was your, hey. uh, was that a diverse group? That was a great question. Um, folks I chatted with, there definitely were some familiar faces from GCA and GOSA. Um, there was one gentleman who I know is a volunteer through Avalonia. Mm, we had um, Andre showed up from town council, as did uh, Eddie Jacom from RTM, which I thought was really fantastic. Other than that, I'm not sure I have a good snapshot on like. Were you able to get a list of people? Kristen had a sign in sheets. I'm not sure if it was really, okay. you know, helpful. The local Paul's probably got it through Conservation Commission. Did mm -hmm. that sort of thing? Or, did, 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 um, was there any press there to hear about this? No. No. Okay. Because that would that would be a great opportunity to mm -hmm. get that out, um, such as the day is these days. Mm -hmm. and, and what was the, was there a goal of your talk? I mean, you're you're in such a pivotal position. I'm thinking of one of the things that I always has been sort of an interest is how do we get the town employees, the public works folks, to be able to identify invasive species mm -hmm. so that when they're out there with their super duper mowers, they might actually mow down the stuff that matters and not the good stuff. Yeah. And doing so, I, one time, a long time ago, I did a little bit of a training program with some of the Groton staff at that sort of thing. But it was, I mean, honestly, it was, I was new on the invasive species task force for the state. And we did a couple of things um, way back when, mm -hmm. <laughs> but I'm sure it's a whole new crew now. Yeah, I think there was great opportunity in Stonington as the tree warden. And you know, there are great opportunities for the folks that are out there doing that, a lot of the work to, um, you know, to reduce mowing and look at different opportunities to save energy, but also remove invasives or 
Thanks. Yeah, and that a line of similar question came up last night where people were sort of saying like, oh, has there been outreach right. to, you know, folks that do that type of land management or folks that, you know, are have solid landscaping businesses in town where they do a lot of business in town? Are those people educated on these things? Are they helping? You know? The answer is no. <laughs> right. yeah, I was like, what? They think you have pots of petunias and geraniums, and that's pollinator pathways, and you put those all over the place, and you <laughs> the pathway that's they're missing. So. Yeah, so I will say so the intent of the presentation last night was, I think, really more so of just, hey, let's do a little bit of an educational. Mm -hmm. um, evening, Kristen with Pollinator Pathway, that's something that she's still really getting up and running. So I think for her, it was like, you know, any opportunity we have to get some folks in the room to talk more about this, create a little bit more buzz about it is a good thing. And I was really willing to, to participate that way. But that being said, right, like, I think that's a baby step towards much more sustained kind of education and outreach we need to do on this topic. Do we have a, um, a, a reporter friend? Besides Collins? Oh, oh, yeah. No, no. I mean, um, uh, um, uh, uh, Kimberly. Um, Drellick? Drellick? Yeah. yeah. Drellick is, is actually very supportive. Because mm -hmm. I was just, think, just sitting here musing and go back to my friend PJ O'Rourke. Um, and uh, the, 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 the fact of if it bleeds, it reads. Uh -huh. So um, we like to educate people about pollinator pathways. What the hell is pollinator pathways? You know, there's something about you'd you'd like to hook it to a headline about the death of the monarch butterfly or something like that, and have an article on. And I mean, it is this is death and dying, and something that kids and the rest of us can care about. And then you write about it as the hook to get them to come to talk about invasive species and pollinator pathways. Because the simple statement that we're having a discussion of pollinator pathways is gray. So I'll tell you about recycling and composting. Absolutely, it just, <laughs> it, it doesn't hardly read. But, well, Bree Shrebel, Bree Shrebel, doesn't she work for the day? She's been doing some interesting. I don't know the name. No, I mean, th there are some really good people around. Yeah. Well, when Judy Benson, Judy when Benson, he was on the, yes. but, but she's gone. She's over with us. She's over with you guys. Right. Um, we would be interested. But I mean, she's the type who not only did a pretty nice job of writing and the rest of it, but she read it. She'd read up on pollinator pathways. I mean, she'd she come around and she'd ask you about it. In a way and, that was, and, and then had a reasoned article. But, but, but my, my sense is that Kimberly does the same thing. That's fine. That's um, what I'm saying. That's what but I'm, you I'm have to make sure you get to her. And that's hard. Yeah. So Kimberly is the one that wrote the article about the Mystic Projects. Yeah. Um, and I reached back out to her right around Christmas and let her know that we were going to be doing the field assessments and that we were going to have a second public meeting coming up. And so she sent me back saying, oh, I'm about to go out of town. But yes, let's catch up on that soon. So yeah. that is on my list of people to kind of yeah. ping. But just, a, just a thought as we're talking, we're going to be talking more about education, I hope. Yeah. yeah. Is that how we how we approach it, and can we have a little more publicity and generalize and how you do it, and maybe reach to our friends in the school, mm -hmm. sort of thing. Yeah. So do, was Christine Earl there? Christine. You, no, you, uh, she didn't introduce herself. Kristen. Oh, Kristen. Kristen Earl. Who? Uh, so there was another yeah. Kristen. Yes. Yes. Name's, okay. Name's familiar. Okay. The reason I I I ask because she is a. Uh, very much of a pro in getting things on the internet, um, particularly um, um, Facebook and and um, the forums. She does a lot in the various forums, mm -hmm. and so um, uh, I think I'm meeting with her sometime next week. I think it is. We have a meeting. Yeah, and and I think we should make sure that she follows this kind of thing because this is the kind of thing that. I mean, she just does as a matter of course, mm -hmm. and that usually gets some jibber jabber going in the, on the, on the uh, online, and that, yeah. that and she's good at it, uh, and she too spends time to make sure she gets it right. I mean, she's not just off the top. Right. Great. Okay. 
Um, Good. Totally switching gears. I have been working with Department of Public Works on trying to go after funding to implement some of the recommendations in the pump station resiliency report that was done. So FEMA through the state has a hazard mitigation grant program. There are some funds currently available. The proposals are onerous, especially if you've not done one before. So we're kind of going through the process of learning what that's all about. I've had a couple of calls with the states. Um, they have Tetra Tech on board as they being the state um, as uh, providing some technical services. So we had a call with Tetra Tech earlier in the week to talk about benefit cost analyses. So it's something that's still definitely kind of bubbling, but we're very much looking at trying to go after these funds to try to get some of those projects implemented. Say it again, which one, what's the name? Hazard Mitigation Grant Program. Anything else? No, I think that's, those are the highlights. Okay. Is that all directed at water sewage? Or is it not? It's, is it broader than that? Anything that mitigates future disaster. Okay. For the, for the pump stations. Yeah, that's right. I say for the pumping station. Sorry. Right. This specifically, yeah, yeah, our application would be. But yeah, I mean, you can do building elevations, you can do okay. seawalls, levees, berms. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. I had thought that that had been in, in our discussions with them. Yeah, they, the, they were in pretty good shape. They I thought. thought they were in pretty good shape, right? They had yeah. elevated a lot of the pumps, but I don't know what. I mean, the elevation was kind of. So it was a, right. So the, the resiliency evaluation assessment they had done last year now recommended based on uh, elevations. Within on the last year. Right within the last year. So that's that's brand that's new compared to us. We're, we're a couple. Yeah. Okay. Okay. Yeah. Years. We're a couple years now. Oh, okay. Yeah. So like two or three years ago, the COG did uh, a report that talked about wastewater infrastructure and and risk to climate vulnerabilities, and so they identified that a number of the pump stations in town are going to be vulnerable in the future. Public Works um, paid to have a resiliency evaluation done of I think thirteen or. Gosh, it might have been 15 of our pump stations, maybe 14. Um, so we have a report that has bulleted a list of recommendations with elevations for future, you know, sea level rise and all of that stuff. So now that we have these lists of recommendations, um, we're trying to secure funds to actually move forward on them. Here, here, here's a question. How, how do we get that out to, so the public knows about it? I guess that's what do you guys think? Is this part of our should be part of our function. Why? Try to pardon. Why? Why? Because um, okay. we're doing something about. Wait, well, you have to run write the grant for it. Um, but but there's already a report that's been put together, right? Oh, to talk about it. Well, it talks about Somebody? what the problem is. Correct. And then mm -hmm. the next step is to this is different the grant. So there's I mean there's a two step. Mm -hmm. opportunity and i'm not sure we should do anything about it at this point but that's the kind of thing where i think it would make sense to we've done a study we've figured out that 14 of the 18 or whatever it is are problems that have to do with elevation and we now are looking at ways of getting money to help us figure out how to solve those problems mm -hmm. that's a yeah, I'm think I'm just thinking, thinking it might be all part of one big package, an article okay. on resilience, you know, working downtown. Yeah, right. Plans, okay. plans in other areas, and then the probably not a standalone. Thing. See, I'm, I'm I'm a little surprised sitting here after the talk we got from Public Works, and this was now I'm telling you it's at least two years out. Mm. One of the first gangs we got together with, we as the task force got yep. together with. Um, and the pump stations were one of the primary questions. Oh. And we were we were told that work had been done, that a number of them had been increased in elevation. Elevation of pumps. And dot, dot, dot. So that... And that it was in good shape. Yeah, I mean, it, it went down hard. onto the... Yeah. Not the list. Off basically. the red column. Uh, and so I'm sitting here hearing it, and I'm not sure I'm moving it back to the red column yet, but I'm maybe moving it. It's one more resiliency compared to what I saw in downtown. Uh, mystic in this rather measly flood we had the other day right. so i will say of the pump stations i'm sorry jesse um 
there's only one that's had flood damages and that one, yes, they have done work right. based on the damages and to try to make it more resilient for the future. So maybe that was where part of that conversation yeah. came from. Yeah, I'm more frank is though that uh, at least from where, where our discussion, particularly with water and pump stations, it was that, you know, we had a system that was oversized relative to demand and need and that work had uh, had already been done to elevate pumps and make it resilient. So, you know, maybe there was, maybe we interpreted it wrong or somebody I overstated know. something that was being planned and wasn't done. I don't know, but that's just interesting. Yeah. Yeah. Or they were referring to one thing and there was a plan for future investment. Right, right. Okay. But it's great that you guys are, are looking into sure. grants for it. They did identify vulnerable pump stations to us in that report. Oh, yeah. yeah. Um, and talked about raising generators and stuff up off the um, ground levels so that they were more resilient. But I, I certainly got the impression from the report or the meeting we had with them a couple of years ago that there was still a lot of work they thought needed to be done, but they sort of knew what that was. What to was. do. Yeah. Right. Okay. Okay. It looks like Mickey has his hand raised. Mickey. I was, I was just going to say that I, I uh, following up on what Zell's comment was, is that I do think that uh, keeping the issues related to resiliency and sustainability in the public's mind via, let's say, a small news release related to pump stations in this in this case, is good because instead, and I, I, that's where I I don't think what uh, you know uh, what uh, Frank was saying was to have kind of a big one that covered a lot of territory, little little zingers like that. Uh, I, I think we'll just make people uh, keep it on their mind that yes, uh, we are facing multiple impacts of uh, sea level rise and warming and all these climate issues. So I, I, I agree with Zell that wherever the, uh, Megan in particular, but whatever the town does something that is addressing these issues or, or, or at least identifying the issues, uh, it's worth uh, the keeping the public uh, 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 up to speed. Or if it gets the town gets the grant, that seems like the <laughs> ideal kind of time to say the town yeah. has. Yeah. Okay. Index Y or Z. Boom. No, no, no disagreement. I just either way. I just okay. I guess the reason I was thinking about it, it was just not on my priority list, but I'll move it on yeah. the priority list. I think, I think Mick has it right about keep keeping hitting him with the, the subject of resiliency, and I thought, I mean. I'm, I was a little surprised that there wasn't more of uh, a press on the uh, 22nd storm. Mm. You know, it was, a, it was sort of photogenic. And it may not have caused a blackout in the whole area, but it was a problem. It's a good storm. And if you lived on Willow Point, you didn't get home for a half a day and more, you know, sort of thing. So. Okay. Um, well, let, let's transition into um, do you want to do yours next um, Jesse happy to um, whatever okay so Jesse um, is our local expert on the how the uh, state of Connecticut General Assembly works oh. And um, that was the Coast Guard Academy, but that's a question. Uh, <laughs> yeah, me too. Connecticut General Assembly. Connecticut <laughs> General Assembly. <laughs> it's not the Coast Guard Academy. Like and um, so I, she said she'd be willing to show, yeah, just so give us a, a, a sort of a fighter yeah. look at this thing because it will give us as individuals an opportunity to really figure this out. I, I've sort of had to struggle through this. I occasionally have to call Jesse up and say, what are you doing next? Um, and so it's it's actually quite helpful. Um, sharing my screen, so you should be able to. I don't think I can do it for you, but do you have an option to do that? Not down here, which usually mm -hmm. puts a sharing yeah. screen. Let me show the details. I think this is actually, from my standpoint, quite timely. We're, we're talking now, Mike. We're just babbling now because they're playing with the technology. The uh, I, I, I thought about. I happen to, to be thinking about the subject 
uh, in the last election when we were losing Andre to the state. And I said, it's really sort of a shame because we got a good idea what, what a good legislator, a good, a good uh, town counselor does for us in the town. But I really don't have much of a sense of what these guys are doing in the state besides sitting around and beating up on each other or, or whatever, and then bragging about stuff that comes from the federal government that's bragged about by other people in the federal government. It's got nothing to do with any of the above uh, sort of thing. So I think it's timely to really get a, an idea of what, what it is they are doing. How's that? Do you need to select, with the select her as the participant? Yeah. Go down into participants and select Jesse. Maybe? Did you share the screen? Yeah. As long as you're doing that, I, I'm wondering whether or not uh, somehow you've you turned on. on the, are you on the Zoom? I'm on Zoom, but I can't, can't get on the state website. Oh. Oh. So you would open that in your browser. So you would Correct. go to, yeah, Chrome or whatever. The issue I'm having is that I made it so that she can share her screen, but she doesn't have the option showing up on her side to share her screen. <laughs> I can't kick I other people out. out. Yeah. I mean, so well, if I could, I mean, here it is, but. We're small enough that. group. It doesn't help. Well, first, Nikki. I'm going to allow. Oh, actually, yeah, just at the top. <laughs> Damn. <Turn it> to <laughs> panel. <laughs> that might. Okay. okay. So if you join as a panelist, okay. now you, if you go back to the Zoom, Zoom screen, now you have the option to share your screen. Oh, don't you love it when it works? Get in somewhere. Now you select that, and you can press share in the bottom right. Okay. Oh, there she's got it. Perfect. Um, I think if you just press that little first line, yeah. So you can see this. So it is um, cga.ct.gov and not the Coast Guard Academy. <laughs> um, but basically, there is an incredible amount of information on this, and I don't want to bore you with more than you want, but let me just real quick run through um the sort of parts of this the first is representation that's a list and it really takes you to trying to find your own legislator which is very frustrating so um but you can get the house if you go down on that you could get the house democratic caucus the house republican caucus but if you go to the whole um the house um members list then you can go to a specific person. Otherwise, they ask you for an address, and it's very frustrating. But the House and the Senate list, you could go. And if you go to one of those, um, let's just take Von Gardner out of interesting here. Let's see, go. Oh, there. Helps if you spell it right, Jess. <laughs> okay, so that gives up Andres, right? Right. And so it says not found, which is not very helpful. But the reason I go there is later in the session, you can find what any legislation that a specific legislator has introduced. You basically go to that and it will tell you that. But right now, in terms of following what's going on in the session, this is not the most helpful thing. Committees is a really important tab and um, each committee is listed. And let me just take the environment committee as a, an example here, because as the session goes on, you can um, get all sorts of information. The bill record book up here on the right hand side tells you all the bills that have been referred to that committee. So when a legislator introduces a bill, and this is the long session, so legislators have until tomorrow to introduce any proposed bill they want to, and there have certainly been a lot introduced. But as the session goes on, the bill record book becomes really helpful because you can see these are the bills that are already been referred to the Environment Committee. If they schedule them for a public hearing, they'll put the date, um, then you get the committee action on it. Um, and when it goes to the House calendar or the Senate calendar. 
But what is really helpful about this is as you go back through session, because right now, most of these bills will never see the light of day. And you don't want to end up trying to follow all of them and you will go crazy. Um, so you go back to the bills reported out of committee Mm -hmm. And that will tell you the ones that they've actually voted positively on. So you can start to track them a well, little bit. Well, but, but there is an important thing here, that, which I had to learn, is that you, you, when, when the bill for the train went, went, went in, I had to, uh, first of all, make sure it was on the record, and it was. And then the next thing I was hunting for is, was the committee going to hold a public hearing on it? Mm -hmm. And because I wanted right. to testify, sure. and I, I wanted to, all my friends to testify. So... Yeah, so it's worth checking this bill book on a regular basis because if a public hearing is scheduled, it will be there in that second column with the date. Um, they have to provide five days notice of when that is going to be heard, and I'll come back to the bullet in a minute. But um, so bills reported out of committee come the JF deadline, which is the joint favorable report deadline. Um, the committee has to act on bills, and I think for environment, it's March 30th, March 22nd. That's on a calendar here, but it's a ways out, um, and we can go back to that and get all of them. But So for every committee meeting, um, they also have to um, they post an agenda for when the committee is going to meet. You have an agenda. And I think right now they're just in organizational stuff, but let's see, there are no, yeah. There's so nothing in there. I'm not surprised by that. Shouldn't be looking up there. I guess I should be doing here. Um, what's also very helpful, and I'm sure that um, Zell made use of this, public hearings, the testimony is recorded and it becomes available on here. So you can see who testified on it and whether they testified in favor, et cetera. Um, and then the vote tally sheets about how it actually did. Um, if they have special hearings and their documents that come up, if you can't find anything anywhere else, just go to the little documents tab and it may be there. And one of the things that happens, um, which is after they've had a public hearing, the staff takes all that information and they come up with a summary of it. And, and sort of. well, uh, my point is that <laughs> it, it is done by staff and it's not done by right. the legislators themselves. And so you at least you get a sense of what is going on, but it's often not accurate. For example, uh, this is a kind of an interesting one. I had written a lot of testimony for a lot of people and they kept saying similar testimony to, and they, Assign someone else for, for writing it, and it wasn't me. So they got it all, they didn't get it right. So you, yeah. you, you, you got this kind of thing going on. The JF reports, that's what's listed on here, yeah. are almost never referred to on the floor or anybody else. It is a staff thing, and as Zell indicates, it's not well executed. Um, what committees usually will do is um, they these are all proposed bills. Almost nothing that's on this yet has actual language. It just says it's supposed to increase energy efficiency and blah, blah, blah. It's a title. Um, the committee, as I said, tomorrow is the deadline for legislators to propose their own bills. A couple of weeks out is the committee bill deadline. So the committee will act to take a proposed bill or the substance of a proposed bill and actually draft it as a bill. Um, we can, you know, this is something we can come back to anytime because it's a lot to absorb all at once, but the committee tab is a really important one. In terms of your own trying to know what's going on over here, the bill info tab, um, if you go down to it, it sort of says, uh, where I got it, so little, I can't, oh, bill tracking, the left column, I gotta go back, sorry. So down here, you can sign up with the website to have them track a bill for you and email you or text you whenever there's action on it. You can you can get that every single day if you want. I sign up for it is only when there's action, so that you're not just getting deluged with stuff. Um, so you could go to this access bill tracking for the general public and sign in and. So only bills with action hyperlink report. I 
interested in that more of the PDL and notify. Can you further refine the search or notification around and what you topics. do is add bills. Okay. So, um, oh, gotcha. So I look at the bill list book. Which so it's specific to, to each one. Don't get notified on it. Okay. Every every thing. 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 You just put in oh, here, and these are bills that I have already signed up to be notified of action on. So what I do every morning now, she can't get out of this, um, is read the list of bills. <laughs> it's pretty pathetic. Um, First you make coffee. <laughs> yeah, it's, oh, it's after the New York Times crossword <laughs> spelling. <laughs> right. oh. Wordle, Wordle, the pocket, and the, this. Um, but the bill, that is, that is a very useful function, and they do the work for you. So um, then. It is also handy to just have the statutes online. Um, you can go to them and you can search by um, index. By the I browse statutes. 22A is the environment, basic environment statutes. <coughs> Energy tends to be in 15, but you can sort of scroll down here and get most anything. And then if you come up on a subject, go to the environment part of the statutes. And, and, and that can save a huge amount of time, in my experience, because going through the, the statutes directly is just impossible. That's because you you got all you got the history, you got the amendments, you got what's been deleted. Yeah, Four thousand pages. Yeah, yeah, and, and it's impossible. And for, volume eight is about the thickest one for the environmental stuff. So. Yeah. Um, this is the base of. Connecticut environmental law. This is uh, right there. Connecticut Environmental Policy Act, et cetera. But you can learn a lot browsing statutes if you can't sleep some night. <laughs> It'll put you to sleep. It will put you to sleep. Um, so the statutes are on here. Um, session information, session items. So every day there is a bulletin published, and the bulletin will tell you what committees are meeting that day. So January 11th, tomorrow. Yesterday. Oh, I'm sorry. <laughs> 13th tomorrow. So sorry. Yep. 10th, 9th. Anyway, it really is what is going on and all public hearings. If you find that there's public hearing, they are listed in here. I don't think you'll find public hearings yet, but find committee meetings. So committee meetings are listed for every day. And if you go on beyond committee meetings, there will be um, public hearings and they are all in alphabetical order. And toward the end of the session, this gets to be a very long document. It gets to be a very Am so I right? there are also just special meetings and things. But the bulletin really tells you what's going on on a given day. And then also under session items, if you want to find out what did happen, there's a house journal, and it'll tell you what happened on a given date. And if you go back, there's the, what I was saying, session items. This is what I look at, morning list of bills. And tells you what bills were filed on a given day. Oh, yeah. So I don't know whether what what is most helpful to you beyond that. And so, um, well, maybe we should come back to this uh, later later in the session because right. it, 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 it gets remarkably more complicated. Just knowing that it exists. Yeah. Yeah. Now, the, the other thing, Jesse, show on the first page when you scroll down. You get a whole week at a, at a glance, and that's kind. Of, I kind of find that useful. Now, you see, right now here, see this thing. So for this week, those are all the days, and and you got all the all the committee meetings taking place, and then you'll see it if they cancel something, it says canceled, and it's, it, I find that actually very useful. This is a public hearing on judiciary tomorrow. So, do the agenda. And so the agendas are often very important because it tells Judge you who's nominations and stuff. 
Is is uh, um, Garrett on there? Uh, this is judges, not commissioners. I don't think. Not commissioners yet. Judge. Sure. No. Okay. State referee. No. 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 Okay. But basically, if, for example, a new commissioner comes in, they have to get a, they get approved, and that's that's where they go to that committee, and they list them there, so you know who's going to get. Um, mm -hmm. And if you decide you want to testify, you can sign up to yep. testify as Joe Q. Public. This just general knowledge, the offices, um, the legislative commissioners are who write legislation, they will take the language of a proposed bill and hopefully work with the legislator who proposed it. What is it you want this to say kind of thing? Um, the Office of Legislative Research um, is an invaluable thing. And if you sort of know the subject you're thinking about is something that probably has been dealt with before, they issue reports and you can just enter a subject matter and all of the reports that um, the um, legislative Research Office has come up with will be listed there. Um, uh, what else here? Legislative commissioners. I don't think anything else there. There are also, are, in addition to the statutes, every single year there is a um, report that the Legislative Research Office issues that is the major laws passed by each committee. Um, I go back and refer to that frequently. I say, I did they do that? But that's probably enough for now. But it is it is a an invaluable resource in terms of if you're really looking for detail on stuff, or if you for some crazy reason want to follow what the legislature is. <laughs> well, the other, the other thing that's valuable before is, is that if you want to know whether the town's authorized to do something with this system, you can find out. Whether it's authorizing legislation or yeah, like whether you emailed me yesterday and said, "Can you find the statute that allows municipalities to spend the money they collect from um, NIPS?" And you know, so you can. I mean, I sort of knew where the bottle bill would be, but if I didn't, I could just go to Google and sort of say, "Where is that?" And it will probably give me enough of a hint that then I can go to the statute. Yeah, that's the key to search. Yeah, the legis legislation may be there, but as a keyword, I think a name searchable. And, uh, so there's one one comment about these these folks who who uh, who write the legislation. Actually, uh, they're, they're professional staff people. They tend to be young lawyers who are really good. They do it, um, and it's really interesting. Um, when I was doing the train stuff, I put together for Christine Conley a three page, you know. Here's what I want. And then I go to look at what, what comes out of that. Oh, yeah, they turn it into legislative ease. Well, no question. Well, about it's not always what you wanted. I no, know. that's true. Too. That's, that's, but, 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 but that was boiled down yeah. 14 lines. That's it. Yeah. I mean, so, so it's interesting how that's yeah, what happens. When session gets underway, there are also ways to follow a bill and see what amendments that can bottle on it, which can be- Are there uh, omnibus things up here? As in the federal government? No, huh? No, no. More likely to have individual discrete things. So you can find the defense budget, you can find the treasury this and that, 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 that. Right. as opposed when, to an omnibus, right. as in we just passed before the session at Christmas time. It's they very had, little like, like that. They funded the government, they funded the defense department, they changed the dates on the use of lines on lobster pots in Maine. Thank God. Same bill, 4,000 pages of legislation, yes. omnibus. The only bills that become that like at all are the budget. <laughs> in, um, right. Jesse, yeah. question for you. So, um, so really interesting and, you know, looks like a valuable site to know about, as Maggie said, and poke around in. It, would you say do most things that would impact sustainability and resilience end up in that environmental committee? I mean, uh, would you oh. would you pull in most of it, or would there have to Public be a works. couple of committees that you? Uh, got? If there are other committees that have cognizance over some part of that, 
bills have to go to each of those committees. Right. Oh, okay. So it may be raised by the Environment Committee, but it might get referred to Planning and Development because it was dealing with something about yeah. them under their purview, or it might get referred to government administration FEMA, because it had yes. to do with municipal right. elections. So if you wanted to figure out if I wanted to ask myself the question, what in 2023 is the state of Connecticut going to work on? The, sorry, what what in 2023 will the state of is the state of Connecticut going to work on? Right. Okay. Sustainability and resilience. What would I have to do to to knit that together? I want to read through the list of bills in the Environment Committee and in the Energy and Technology. Could you search it by resilience and sustainability? Though? That was the question. One of the questions. I don't think so. I don't. I don't think not. Not bills introduced. It's okay. not. But it's right not. now, I will tell you on that list that I just had, there are quite a few that have some of those terminology terms in them. The governor's the governor's bills and the. Um, agency bills have not yet been submitted, which is okay. getting late. And, and they're key, I think, yeah, right. what I've been able to see. Governors yesterday, um, yes, yes, yesterday, um, said that he was going to introduce um, energy legislation on energy efficiency, but the language of that is not yet out. I checked actually some before it came up. Well, um, and similarly, DEEP's bills are not out. The way to tell those bills, if you see the list of bills introduced, they will all be introduced under the name of the leadership of the General Assembly. So it will say Senator Looney, um, Representative um, Ritter, et cetera. And there will be the four names of the Democratic leaders. Okay. And that tells you it's an agency bill or it's a governor's okay. bill. And I mean, just to be uh, to follow that up is that so bills can get introduced by senators, by representatives, agencies, and I, I guess the governor yeah. separate from from that, yeah. right? So you 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 get it from I mean, there's all, all these different sources, sources um, that, that that you have to sort of figure out. I mean, in transfer, the thing that I've been working on, I mean, the whole trans TOD transit oriented development mm -hmm. that, that'll go through transportation, but it's going to end up being in the housing, whatever that group is, because that has to do with planning and zoning. And so they're going to probably take a look at that. So you have to sort of try to figure out who might be impacted by it. Who might be impacted. And those government, uh, governor and agency bills get assigned by the committee chairs to whether they want them to be a Senate bill or a House bill. Okay. And that is a political call yeah. part. Um, Either by they think you know they can get it through here or whatever because all bills have to be passed identically by both chambers, um, and all committee meetings and all public hearings are joint. So there is a Senate chair and a House chair and a, um, for every single committee. And if you're really bored and can't sleep at night, off to the right here, you can just stream the House for the Senate. <laughs> <laughs> Yeah, tell me they'd see me there and say, "Oh, get a life." Yeah. <laughs> that did occur to me to hey. get a life. <laughs> any, other, any other questions at this point? True. I think it's true. Yeah, that's great. Thank you, Jesse. And and maybe we'll do a update somewhere just along and we'll get a little. Well, again, we you know uh, yeah, practice yeah. Yeah. yeah, there's a bill coming through on flooding or something. Right, 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 yeah. right, right. And right, if it's right. a bill that really interests you, I mean, you yeah. do want to read the language because, <laughs> as Zell well knows, and I certainly right. well know, um, sometimes things aren't written the way they should. When a bill actually reaches the floor, um, it will get a file number, and at that point, the legislative commissioner's office writes a little blurb about the, what this bill does. Um, the Office of Fiscal Analysis does a little blurb on what the fiscal impact of, and that includes municipalities. There has been legislation once again proposed this year already to make there have to be a climate assessment on such also. Just to give you one example, and it's I'll real quick. So one of the my transportation thing went through last mm -hmm. year. The um someone put in an amendment that um they ought to connect New London to to Norwich, uh -huh. going up the west side, and there's nothing, nothing 
in the record that suggests that should have been in there, but it's in there. And one of my frustrations that I often have called Jesse, how did it get from here to there? And I don't know how you figure that out. Uh, maybe mysterious. Yeah, well, yeah. <laughs> no, but you don't know. Because, and, 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 the committee. and then when you look at it, but but here's the really interesting part: you look at it, a map, yeah. and you can't get across the river yeah. in Norwich. It's like, well, why'd you put it in there? <laughs> How's that gonna work? Uh, how's that gonna work? Yeah, it was nothing in there about attention. bridges. We're gonna take <laughs> the same river ferry in, but it just um, oh, we're gonna move it up. That's right. That's right. So, I mean, it's it, that part. I mean, some of it's, it's like, huh? Uh, yeah. But it's interesting because it, it does happen. Yeah. I mean, it's kind of fun to just, if you have something you're interested in, they can sit, follow one of these things all the way through. Okay. Um, any, um, any more questions? Okay. So, the next, next issue was um, I came in to talk to Megan and, and John. Um, changing role of the, of the task force going forward. I think um, um, my sense is that John and Megan really wanted to get a sense of um, hold on a second. To, it, it's in my hearing aids. You didn't hear it, but I did. We did. Uh, you did? <laughs> okay. <laughs> I can't tell what you hear what you can't hear. Um, Okay, so um, the question is how we, and we've already talked about this a little bit about how it is we might evolve going forward. And, and Megan, do you want to sort of say what you, um, your perception of this was, is, is, or what do you think um, you and John are thinking about? And then we will sort of start this rolling here. Yeah, and it was really just sort of the start of a, an open discussion reflecting the fact that. I think this is just my fourth meeting with you all, <laughs> but the three prior prior meetings, everyone, you know, what I had heard from all of you was that, um, you know, you were interested in my take on uh, what would be helpful to me. And there was a little bit of a change just based on the fact that prior, a lot of your energy went into trying to get my position created. And now that my position is created, you're here. I'm here. So really, um, you know, I had just relate to John that some of those conversations had been happening. And so we figured the new year was a, a good time to have Zell in to just chat about it. So did you guys come up with any brilliant plan? Um, well, I think the, 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 there were two. Ta -da! Yeah. Ta -da! Yeah. Drum roll. <laughs> and? No, I thought, well, okay. So um, I think I indicated to both John and to uh, Megan, I think it was a little early to, to really come to a conclusion uh, or to have a, a, a final, I mean, a, you know, work, a recommendation, but that we would need to take some time to really do this well. Um, and I, I expressed, and not John or Megan expressed, is that I was a little concerned because if we do change our charter, that needs to go back to the town council to be done. And um, uh, I am, um, um, shall we say, a little concerned about uh, functionality at this point. Uh, functionality of, of the council in terms of how they're electing and how they're putting parts of the process, the, the, the agencies together. A uh, second thing is that it was very clear to me all the way through getting Megan on board is that uh, they expected results. And so it'd be nice to go back to the council with a set of results. Here's what we've, here's what Megan has done. And we think we need to change our, 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 our uh, um, a charter in the following sorts of ways. So having said that, uh, then that sort of, is that fairly accurate? Yeah, I think so. What we said? Um, uh, then um, what 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 are the things that we could do? And obviously, the one thing that we already are charter to do is education. Although I think um, uh, we have done that bits and pieces, but not in any any any. any no, we haven't even done bits and pieces. I would disagree with that. Okay. Um, I mean, I maybe I feel that way because I've been out talking to people, but um, 
I'm not sure. All right. I mean, that's that is a matter of definition of bits. <laughs> okay. Got it. Right. Okay. Very, um, very small bits. Small bits. Um, and, and then the other thing that uh, Megan raised, and because we had raised it, and I think um, this is a, a good point, we raised it earlier. Um, how do we get people to participate in resilience and sustainability issues? Um, and then the thought was going back to um, our sort of after action look at the uh, Mystic Flood study. Um, there were, while there were a good number of people there, um, I think I think Frank felt, I certainly felt that um, we could have had a bigger group. And then the question is, so how do we, how can we participate in helping that happen? Mm -hmm. Is that? Yeah, I mean, I think the, the the thought I shared during that meeting was really, I look forward to determining with you all things that we can work on together. Um, as much as I like to tell you about, oh, this is why I spent my time doing. I think it'd be much more meaningful if there's things that you know we're 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 talking about as a group. So I think the discussion that I think we're going to have here in a couple of minutes about how to get the word out for the next public meeting for Mystics Flood Study is a good example of things that you all can provide your insights and your advice to. It gives me a good direction. Um, so a little bit more meatier in terms of content. Um, so, so to that point, I mean, I had told you that I was going to talk with. You're stuck in a group. Um, talk a little bit about. Um, so I went to the town hall and um, asked our GIS guy, you know, did he have any a flood maps? And the, the, the short answer was. No, we don't have one that are on the shelf, but hey, wait a second, though, I can put one together for you. And as fast as I'm sitting there saying, okay, what, what do I want? I want elevation, I want building, I want the 100 year, I want the 500 year flood, and that's what I got here. And then um, the interesting part of this was, and this is where I've been talking to Frank about, it, is okay, so this is what it looks like in. This the scale, but now if you look at it in this scale, this size, the kind of thing you can hand out to somebody, um, it looks quite different. And and then uh, the question is, how does this relate to the public? Here's the flood map, and you own this piece of property here. What's it mean? And how do you how do you how do you how do you as the Joe Q public? And that's the part of the. Um, both why we want to reach the public, but also educating. Oh. Yeah, yeah. So, um, and, and 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 just take a. I'm just going to hand this. This is in three. Maps. I'm just going to hand it around to you. You'll see things on there that you can't see on here because it's been blown up. For example, you look in this thing and you say, "Where the hell is the shoreline?" And it's there, but you can't see it. But you look at when you reduce it down, you've got the shoreline there. Mm -hmm. So it's that kind of thing. Now that's that's part of what just the what should we say technology mm -hmm. of, of, of 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 the limits of the technology. On one hand, the other thing is that what we know is this is based upon the FEMA stuff, and what Frank and the guys that over at every point have been saying. Oh, no, 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 no. We got to update that. We got this issue of twenty inches by twenty fifty. We know it's going to likely happen, but then. Um, um, 2050 on whether it's the 100 year or the 500, where does that put this line moving up the slope? I think, interestingly, not to interrupt you, but I don't know whether folks saw, I think it was the Times, not the Post, but after the storms last week, there are a lot of people complaining about the FEMA maps because that's not what, what happened. And so suddenly this issue of inaccuracies that you guys have been working on well, it, for a be, long time. Well, you've got to be careful. I think the subject tonight is is education. Yeah, no, not, but, it, not, but not I the, think there is the technology. The public, public, no, it's not even the technology, but I think there is starting to be a wider public interest in oh, yeah. what do these maps really represent. Right. What can I learn from them? You see, some of this data may be FEMA data. And some of the data on the Connecticut, on the Circa 
Connecticut surge maps that we have online and all the rest of it. That's water level elevations against topography. It's not a model. It's water level elevations against it's a real the, thing. It's real thing. It's actual and, measurements. And so there are, there are differences in the two maps, if you will. And then you bring in the way FEMA is mapping. Right now, one of the studies that's going on is a wave analysis in the river to look at wave dissipation in the river because the FEMA maps have waves that are unreasonable upriver, too high. And so you see there's, there's, there are a number of other things going on right now. The other thing is that the, uh, the maps that we've shown in that uh, meeting on uh, the optimistic flood mm -hmm. study, you had a couple of clips from the Connecticut, from the Circa yeah. program, okay? And they didn't really have houses on them. It was sort of the profiling, you see yeah. bushes and trees and green and not green and sort of thing. The, the beauty of this one was that he, it's the assessor's map, basically, with there. So you can find your house on this map. So there's, there's benefits we're looking at now merging the two. When we bring the assessor's map into the circa map. We're going to have a meeting next week uh, with Donald and Noah on so, it. Oh, great. Okay. So what, what, uh, this is new information for you, Megan. Um, um, Frank had, uh, I'd asked Frank if he could set up. A meeting with appropriate people over in um, Avery Point, and so I think I'd like to get if you you're available, you, and also to get Noah Feldman, who's the guy who yeah. actually produced. Oh the yeah, that was great. To go over now, Noah says no problem. If you give me the data, I can. Oh yeah. Yeah, you give him numbers, he'll put. You it give in him numbers, numbers, he can do it, and he says, oh yeah, we we can do this. So I think there is a way. Now we we may be helping the town, I think here, and that's a part of this uh, role of um, a little off the subject. Um, if I uh, if I was asked about what 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 is what we were and what we should be, mm -hmm. um. I sit here and I amuse a little bit about because it's sort of spring loaded. Sorry. You know what I mean? The, um, when we came together, we were asked, I think, to look at matters that affected resilience and sustainability in the town. And we divided it up into a series of different areas. And we uh, prepared at least draft reports on those areas. And they involved the health and, they, and they, they involved water level elevations and coastal resilience and to some extent bungs and bunnies, but not an awful lot. Um, and energy. And, and energy, and energy, big energy. And um, we realized that if we're gonna get anything going on this, uh, that, that in, the, in the town, because all the time we're talking about getting something going on it, not planning. We were impressed with the library of planning documents that already existed. We said, now it's time to start cutting bait because we're going fishing and the um, it's time. So it was clear that we needed, the town needed help on this, both in terms of town commitment, and that was the resolution, and in terms of personnel, and that was Megan. So we have this list of problems. And we're trying to attack this list of problems. And we need to have a method to attack this list of problems. And we've got some of the methods to attack this list of problems. It would seem to me that our role right now is uh, to keep an eye on how well we're, the town is attacking this list of problems and assist to the extent possible, but also be the critical reviewers of the efforts as they proceed. Um, and I. And I'd like to think that that effort is better done in-house with a committee that is or, or a task force that is part of the town, as opposed to NGO kind of operation external to looking at it. So that, that, that's what I, I see our role in the next stage is now the, the, the action plans and how well the town is developing and proceeding with the actions that are planned. In a nutshell, and if and if that doesn't really, you see, it all the time, parenthetical, all the time, not interfering 
with the way the town is functioning. If this is if this is an impediment to town functioning, we got other things to do. Yeah, but I think the meeting that um, Zell just referenced about that you're in the process of setting up is a critical part of that because if the data and the information from Circa better informs whether it's public works work mm -hmm. on pump stations or anything right. else, that is a valuable function to make sure that that communication and information is getting absolutely um, to absolutely. the town. And you know, we know we tried early on to get the town to talk to Circa, and you know, like everybody else, just over. We had a meeting and nothing happened. Right. And I mean, that not, actually, that's not true. Some yeah. things did happen, but, but basically, there was this. Right. Uh, 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 you know, and so I think yeah. if Noah can start to incorporate some of that information in, then that's a conduit to the town that hasn't existed. No. Um, no. So now, if, if there's not too much terrible disagreement with, with that preface, uh, the criticism that I would have of the task force effort is that our commitment to education early in the game has not really been much fulfilled. We have, we have work to do, and we, we committed ourselves to some extent to educating the public. And we talked about you know, placards around the storm staffs and, and the like, and, and count whether we should have a meeting in the library or uh, in the senior center, whatever we're calling it now, post 55 center. <laughs> the, uh, um, and um, I was very encouraged by the uh, meeting we had, Megan and I had at the uh, Magnet Marine Science School. Um, that, that looked like a, that looked like rich turf yeah. to play with. But, um, I would submit that one of our next efforts really ought to be more directed and active in terms of education. What does it consist of? I don't know, question. Looks like Mickey has his hand raised. Pardon? Mickey, Mickey has his hand raised. Mickey. I, I was going to just, uh, I certainly agree with what uh, Frank is saying about education, uh, but uh, uh, I, I just wanted to, point out another role that we can play. We have been playing it, and I think we can continue to play with it, is that that I think one of the things we brought to the table is we have tentacles in lots of different places uh, that deal with uh, these issues. So that, for example, uh, the, the fact that I'm involved with the Long Island Sound Study and the Citizen Advisory Committee and the Scientific Advisory Committee to that, um, I can I can feed to Megan, uh, you know, uh, both uh, things that are going on, as well as recommendations as to how her personal involvement with that can be. And um, I think uh, you know Jesse's in, uh, knowledge and tentacles with the with the General Assembly is doing the same thing. So so I do think we have a lot, and you know Zell with his with the with the transportation stuff, and Frank with the with the climate, with the uh, sea level, uh, and so on. E each of us are bringing something to the table that that helps. Uh, I think Megan, uh, you know, uh, uh, do her job, um, and um, so that. And I think we can continue to do that. I, I, I've been trying to get more involved. For example, more knowledgeable who the players are with regard to uh, organic composting. Um, and so we can bring that to the table. So uh, I think we still have that role to play. Yeah, I mean, to me, that's a crucial role, right? And I, I, one that I think that we, we have been, right? You know, Jesse was kind enough to attend a meeting with me. Frank attended meeting, a meeting with me. What you all are doing, being the conduit to Circa to say, okay, we have the resources, we know the right people to ask, and we can make this connection with GIS information, I think is like a perfect example in my mind of really the value out of this task force. You're able to help make that connection. You know, there's going to be things that I run into that are obstacles that you all might say, we know who you really need to talk to about that. Or, you know, we're familiar with this approach. Let's see, you know, like having that type of relationship where you all are 
helping shepherd some of these things forward, I think is, is, would be very beneficial to me. And I think that's to date, you know, really what we've kind of been starting to develop. I'm not trying to say that you can't be critical of me. You certainly can. <laughs> and, you <will laughs> and tell me and you know, we... if you think that things are going in a, in a different direction or if you have concerns. Um, and something I think I said in an earlier meeting um, was reflective of the fact that I'm, I'm new, right? I'm now four months in to this position. Mm -hmm. I think I can still say I'm new. Mm -hmm. I think I have another like two months on that. And I'm also new to Brian, right? So. I still want to hear from you all outside of the draft report you wrote, what your priorities are, what your dream of a resilient gratin is, what are the things that keep you up at night? And I actually looked up because I coworker asked me, like, oh, well, the task force as it was, you know, enacted, what is the role? So I actually looked up your role. <laughs> That's a great question. Yeah. And one of the items is to recommend pilot projects or initiatives. So, you know, that is also something I'm still very much interested in. As you all think, gosh, Megan, this is really important. Letting me know that because I'm still trying to figure out this is part of the conversation we have with John and Zell. I'm still trying to figure out my roadmap for it. And my head four months in, is still swimming with all of the things I would like to do. Yeah, almost, right. But almost too much. Just almost right. too much. Right. And like having to give myself grace sometimes with the fact that it's four months and I can't have done it all already. Right. But like being able to have conversations with you about how to triage some of these things, how to prioritize things based on your understanding of the town, your history of the town, I think would also be really crucial. Mm -hmm. Now, so I'm leaving off my paragraph on the education. Oh, uh, wait, before, oh. you, before you do that, let, let's, let's make sure we got. Uh, yeah, I mean, I guess in my, in my view, um, there's a unit of work that the task force completed, right? And I think it needs to be really regrouped. I mean, otherwise, I think these things just sort of go on and on forever, potentially. So I think the way it gets regrouped has got to be, as we've described, some kind of a resource, um, a advisory committee, um, a committee of people that are actually going to do something that helps the you know, Megan in her new role and position and helps, mm -hmm. you know. So I think we should actually step back and say, what are the things over the next, whether it's one year, two years, but a little bit longer time cycle than, um, you know, the immediate one that you want to try to accomplish and what skill sets and resources are needed to accomplish those things. And then it's, kind of constituting an advisory board, whatever you want to call it, a mentoring board, um, whatever, that would help with that. And it may or may not be, um, you know, every single person that's on the task force. Or some new ones. And it may be some new skill sets yeah. that you really want added in. I, I agree with that, sir. It's sort of, it's more sort of as needed, but in the advisory yeah. capacity and the, yeah. you know, we can, we can take advantage of our various connections and things like yeah. that, but it would be more sort of in the background, but as needed, you know, so that we're not burdening you with me meetings and you know, long meetings. And, you know, so you can really, that would allow you to focus, I think, a little bit. Jesse? Probably sort of building off of that too, but. Um, I'm thinking like, as you undertake different projects, um, different ones of us have expertise in some of those and not in others. And that that is a way, um, you know, certainly the circus stuff, making use of Frank's connections there and all of that kind of thing. I think it's probably an area that interests all of us, but um, the expertise and, you know, what you really ought to be looking at this, um, Frank is going to have a better idea of than any of us. Um, obviously, transportation, you're in that um, in that seat. Um, you know, I my energy hat is 
blowing off the roof right now <laughs> as people try to reform things that you can't change. I mean, it's just sort of like, okay, but you know, our citizens are going to be shell-shocked by their electric bills this month, absolutely shell-shocked, and natural gas bills to the degree to that they are doing them. We could help our citizens by educating them as to the resources that are out there that will reduce their use dramatically. Um, and we also help benefit, you know, the sustainability part of what, what we're talking about. Um, I, there are a bunch of bills in on trees too. <laughs> um, and, you know, there, I just think of, you know, taking expertise or at least immersion in some of these issues and we can help. Um, and that doesn't necessarily mean a full task force needing to do that. But well, I mean, just just so I think it's at least uh, maybe I've not done this well, but part of what I've allowed to happen, and I think was that Frank, you have done certain things because we said go ahead and do it. Uh, certainly, you and Victor, um, mm -hmm. I had very little to do with what you guys did, and um, that's sort of how we've. We've done it now. It, if that's not a good model, um, how we how we want to change it? I mean, my sense is because you've got, and, and part of it, I really trust the level of expertise we have here. I've let people go and do this. I, and I my sense is that's probably the best way to do it in terms of our being response, being sensitive to our time commitments. Um, I'd much prefer to have you come back to the room, and then to those things where we want to do it jointly we could do it jointly so i think there's that part of i'm happy to you know if you want to have a new chairman that's fine if we want to but i mean just okay <laughs> i guess is, oh i have a question for you which is uh, what do you see as the pros and cons of continuing as a task force versus you declare yourself done from the standpoint of the groton town council at some point i would like I mean, is there value to there is definitely as a task force? There is definitely value in keeping the group together as a part of the town. Now, I don't happen to like the notion of task force. What? I don't. <laughs> That's all right. Whisper that. You're on mute. It's fine. There's no prohibition against that. Um. Anyhow. Um. Um, and, and and there's good precedent for that. Mm -hmm. Say okay, I mean, it's happened before. There's no reason why it can't happen again. Yeah. Um, so part of what I I need to hear from you is how you want. I mean, not only well, I think we need to have a, a formal group that does um, have the notion of being an advisory group. Yeah, formally of time because. What I happen, I what happens what, over and over again, they say, well, who you represent? I guess what I'm asking you is, are we talking about continuing as a task force with some kind of sanction that admittedly was the old council um, through the council? Or are we just talking about, you know, Megan, you, John, whoever are going to agree. It's a great idea to have an advisory group or whatever you're going to call it. And we need these skill sets and 80% of it probably still continues. And maybe we add in some people, maybe we don't, whatever it, whatever it gets reconstituted as, it kind of matches with the workflow and the, the ideation that you probably want to go at for projects and what you want to do. Um, and I'm just asking the question mm -hmm. of, you know. That's clear. Yeah. yeah. The question is clear. Yeah, what she's asking. Right, right, right. Okay, so Carla. I'm going to answer it. <laughs> well, I'm going to take back my floor. Yeah. I yielded my floor for that discussion. Yeah. Because I had one more line to add at the end of the education initiative that I think we so really going to answer the whatever question. it is <laughs> is the matter of, of the meeting with the town council. Out of all of what I just said. That is to say, a little review of the history, a little review of the progress that's made on what we thought to be, what we thought were going to be major issues in this whole thing, and where we sit in, sit in all of that. A, sort of a, an annual report to the town council in the interest 
and where we think we might go with education and a few other things in the interest of introducing ourselves to the people that we believe we're working for. It's not the planning office that we believe we're working for. In fact, we ask that your position be at the at the uh, at John Burt's level as opposed to John Reiner's level. Um, and I think it's essential. I was a little bit disturbed by the earlier comment about what the council was or wasn't, which we all know what it is or what it isn't. Um, I think to some extent, you have to ignore that. They are the town council. We are a stepchild or whatever it is, handmaiden <laughs> of, the, of the town council. And it would be, I think, in our interest and in their interest to have an, something of an annual report to them. Uh, I completely agree. I, I yield my floor to. No, and I think that's important. I think we need to maintain a relationship with the town council um, because um, if this is, in my view, long view, to be successful, we're going to have to change a lot of what we do in this town. You bet. And that was one of the things that was very and, evident and, in the and, and I think, um, well, we'll take some heat for that. That's. That's yeah. important. So I think that doesn't go away. Yeah. And you want to do it hard for me to say politically. Correct. You know, the bull in the China shop doesn't necessarily, mm -hmm. sometimes it's needed. And you know, a few of them might be useful. You know how it goes. But in general, we're a partner with them. Exactly. Yeah. And working with them. And I was disturbed in that in the presentation, if you recall, in the presentation I made for you all. Uh, to the council about the uh, data center, that there were deer, deer in the headlights looks when I mentioned the task force. Mm. As a who? As a who? As the who? You know. The same thing happened on um, interviewing her for the job. Uh, you know, had no idea for you. It existed. <laughs> well, <laughs> so but answer your question. Um, are you finished? I'm sorry. Okay. Uh, I, well, I think it could make sense to try to change our quote, charter. Um, I think the hassle and the risk of doing so um, is fairly significant right now, given the sort of non-functionality of the town council, and that I don't think our current incarnation keeps us from doing, in a sense, what we've been talking about doing. So my inclination is to leave it Ask um, forgiveness not permission well and also to do what we think we ought to be doing i think a report to the town council makes all sorts of sense i think it might make sense after you know some of these things come back through that we have a little clearer sense of you know what is actually going to be on in action kind of thing um so i don't think there's a rush to do it but um I mean, it's possible when you do a report, they may say, who the heck are you guys? And, you know. <laughs> oh, no, no, no. The town council knows who we are. No, no, yeah, no doubt. I have okay. spent enough time with those individual counselors on but behalf they of them. They know who we are. Yeah. I mean, the current council. Uh, well, uh, the, the former one as well. Oh, the former one is. is the former one, I know. We, we no, but I, mean, I, have, I have, that's been a continuing. I hope I have coffee. And that's what I've been doing. Now I haven't done as much in the last four or five months, um, but but that's what I've been doing, and so I think that's important. Oh yeah. Um, the other thing that you mentioned, which is which is worthwhile too, is that whether it's testifying on transportation things, whether it's testifying on energy things, whether it's what any of these two, um, I'm not just Sarah Kelly. I'm a member of the Grattan um, Task Force. And that, you know, whatever cloud it does, but not every town has one. Um, let me tell you, I mean, and I haven't done this much to have any data. To, I mean, I haven't got a, a robust database, mm -hmm. but the couple of times that I have testified, I've had members of the East Committee say, we're so glad to have you here from the town of Grat as representative of um, and because there are not, this is not happening with other communities. And they, the legislators, are responsive to that big time. Okay. So I think so can you add capability onto this? Why not? Our, our, I think our, our, our current 
charter is such that we don't do anything. <laughs> we can just about do anything. I mean, we've got a very broad charter. I would partly like to. You disagree, Megan? No, no. Oh, okay. I mean, <laughs> I would like to change the name. I disagree. You're doing anything? Yeah, I wouldn't mess with it too much. Well, maybe it's too much. Yeah, okay. But by all, I change the name. Just kind of give, a, you know, advisory committee has a little task force implies that there's a, a pot hole you to fill. Well, it's a beginning. A task force has a beginning and an end. And I think if we want to yeah. keep it going, we should just advisory for yeah, yeah. whatever. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Other than and, that, I wouldn't mess with it too much. Just no, no, I'm not. No, 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 no. I mean, I remember what I said. Well, I think it supports both what you've all been saying is that um, I'm not in a rush to do it. No, um, yeah, right. I think well, maybe it's more a matter of what we see our role right. and leave the name the same, and, but what's what you're doing. Right? I think you're advising. Be, I think it would be interesting to have it, um, you know, and maybe this is something that's a couple months from now, you know, recognizing that you're still. You know, early in the role, but whether it's a couple members of the town as well as this group, and then think about additional skill sets you might want to add in, and you have some kind of a strategy session where you look out, a, you know, two years, five years, I don't know where you want to benchmark it. I mean, out of days, what are, what are, some of the things you want to. Well, there's some very, very practical things that we do have to consider. And, yeah. You know, my age, I ain't going to be here forever. <laughs> and some of the other ones are getting up there too. So I want to, I, want, I mean, and, and John specifically mentioned this. You know, have you looked for some younger people? And the answer is, you betcha, but we haven't been able to find them. And, have and, you we, and we need to find them. And, 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 how about some diversity and yeah. oh, even more diverse. I said, well, at least I got some women here. Some really kick-ass smart huh? women too. Pardon? <laughs> and they're yeah. smart women. <laughs> but but I, uh, no, I think those. I mean, I, I would love to get another medical person involved. Yeah. And I would like to get. Um, It'd be good to have a link directly to the Ledge Light Health District. I mean, uh, they have the the power of. You know all that information, and and maybe you want to link it into the school system. I mean, Patrice kind of was that. I mean, she was yeah, yeah. about that, and maybe she'd come back. She might. She might. I mean, that's for that, or at least participate. Let, let's put it this way: I saw her political being that they saw. It suggested she <laughs> hasn't forgotten. You know, let's as you go along on this. Let's think about the last year or two for a minute. Um, and the uh, the subject is, um, I guess, simply we we could put it on in terms of the resolution. And along comes uh, Parks and Rec. Pick a name. And they uh, they have some problems with their beach, and they have some problems with a parking lot, and maybe they have some problems with money. And they get involved with uh, a group, and they get some money for the group. And, you, and when we hear about it, you say, good Jesus, where the hell did they ever get that group again? And what a waste of money. What the hell are we doing here? No, they did not take advantage of what the skill set that sits around this table could provide them. And you can think of a few other things. And John Reiner is not without, uh, without blame in some of this procedure. Um, I wonder how you might better make your, the quality of your advice available to known by the departments of the town. I, I, I have a feeling we sat here a year ago, within a year ago, we looked at a number of proposals that were in and a number of proposals that were funded and we knew nothing about them. And they dealt specifically with resilience and sustainability. And we said, going on. And we said, oh, I, I can go fishing or sailing, you know, sort of thing. So you say, okay, before you jump off the cliff just yet, let's think about this. How does it happen? There's a lot of stove piping. I'm betting a buck that a lot goes on in public works that the planning office never hears about. And what goes on in Parks and Rec, the engineering department hears about it at the last, when they last met it. I know because I've been involved in some of it. You know, we want to get the beach rate down at, at Esker Point. Uh, public works doesn't have an engineer or a machine to do it, but they got funding to do it. 
see what this function right now. Kind of have that thing. So there's stovepipe issues. There's all sorts of things. environmental issues about that. But that's a whole different story. Yeah. Yeah. Well, I, I, yeah. your, your points. So I mean, let's let's remember we went through this. No, we, we we around this table, maybe even this table, went up, went, went up through this and looking at it and questioning just what our role was before you came in. Mm -hmm. my, my, my guess is we're going to be doing that for a while. <laughs> I guess the question is how it life. Yeah. No, no, but 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 this is but okay. And but, fundamentally, that's why we wanted her position. Yeah. In, John exactly. Office. This is a start to so, get it okay to begin to make it, that change. Yeah, it had, it had a different level uh, impacts in this area yeah. on the actions of every single department. Give you more stroke in all the departments, but that's parks and rec. Yeah. But that's and harder. Departments we didn't meet with. But the um, point is that's that for us is a is a is a is a very heavy lift. I know it needs to be done. And part of what I was hearing from the town was, we don't want to spend this money on this new person. And I kept saying, well, if this person does a good job, we'll bring in grants and, and, and this will make the town able to do this stuff, stuff and do it well. And so I have to go back and, you know, there are people who are still saying that kind of stuff. And they're not saying it quite so loudly, but they're still saying it. So I want to make sure we get this set up and it's, it's going to be a series of steps and and, and we're well on the way of, of running down this path which is got a really good got you on board we're really pleased with that you are making the kind of headway that i was were surprised about um and while right now it has tended to be within the silo there's going to be an opportunity and some of them you're working on where you're going to be Bridging the silo, for example, yeah. between public works and planning. And that's exactly what I want to see happen. And that's not going to be an easy thing to do um, because, because of their history. Well, also 24 hours in the day. Well, that's true. <laughs> that's true. So, so we're, let's try to knit together what we're saying about the group and next steps. Okay. Mm -hmm. of where are we? We're saying that the that the group continues for We're now in transition in transitioning to some kind of advisory role, probably and whatever that we are going to wait to discuss with the council until we have the, what for six months <laughs> right. We have the results from some examples of what well, you already. Have. Gotten some I know. Things. I mean, you've yeah. already got some, some great things. But, uh, imagine having a having. Yeah, I think you're exactly right. And then if we have a couple of areas where this, so so you're not just speaking to you know two counselors, you're speaking to like eight of them or seven of them or six of them. Then 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 we're building that internal support. And then what do you what do you want to do with the concept that that I and I agree with you about pulling in. Um, you know, more representation into the group that is diverse in background, skill set, and yeah. age. <laughs> yep, yep. Well, I mean, I'm, I can think of, a, I mean, there's some easy ones. How about a representative from the Navy? Mm -hmm. You know, I mean, they're a big part of our community. I mean, they're sort of the silent I mean, they are a city within our city. Yeah. They really are. What did I read about energy the other day? The Navy? Yes, exactly. I, I couldn't quite follow them. The, well, it was well ball, but it was that was a little hard to follow. But, but I mean, there's an example. Um, uh, we, we're not playing really well with the, 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 the jurisdictions. I mean, with the city and... Mm -hmm. you know, I and, the and, and so there's some work to be done there. There are certainly, uh, and I hear from the state more and more and more about um, equity, mm -hmm. and I haven't got my hands around. I, I don't have a good feel for that right now. I mean, uh, the, the state DOT says, got an equity problem. Yeah, I can ignore it. Well, no, I can't ignore it. It's actually uh, helpful. Huh? Well, it's helpful to what you're trying to do. I know. Yeah. Absolutely. Yeah. So, 
but I want to understand what it is. <laughs> I mean, it's I, like I want to sure who, who, who can work with us on that. Oh. And I think, I mean, John made another good point that I really think is, is serious. Are we listening? Mm -hmm. and, I, and that's a good question. Are, are we, we listening? listening? Are we listening to what the public? What are they saying? I don't know. <laughs> well, that would tell us the answer right there. That's, I mean, <laughs> but part of that's not because I'm, I'm not out there listening. So it means that. Which is when our, I mean, when I don't know what she thinks she's going to do with it, but Christine Conley introduced a bill. She said in response to the 30 from odd phone calls I've gotten about electric bills. Um, yeah. And. You know, she's obviously listening because people call her when they've got a problem. They don't call us when that happens. Um, but the lack of sort of understanding as to what the tools are to address those is pretty widespread. But there are things that we could do better than Christine could do to help address those in the town. If I could ask, so what do you mean about your comments that you just made about equity? Ignoring that, use that on looking at Frank. Um, because I don't think we have a problem with equity. In what way? Um, there are four women sitting here and two men. Oh, you're talking about, you're talking about diversity, not equity. equity. Well, what's diversity? And what's uh, maybe I'm not talking, 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 talking about the town. You know, we, one of the things we came in here early in the game. We talked about low-income housing and the effects of climate change and low-income housing. And we talked about the social vulnerability. And we talked about social vulnerability and, and, and all the rest. Yeah. The, the, the issue is very much central to our concerns all around. Mm -hmm. the, that What we're hearing everywhere we turn now is, uh, in fact, I just got a thing from the university again about another, uh, what is it? DEI, but it's, there's, a, there's a couple of other initials in the whole thing, coming together and sitting around and talking about it. I think we have been acting on equity our entire existence here and our entire life, working black, red, yellow, and green, and uh, women and uh, underrepresented, this, that, and the other thing, that it's nothing new to us. It's a very political issue today that has to be put top center on, on every piece of paper, and they'll call you up and ask you about equity. And I said, I, 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 don't, I said, fine, thank you very much, and hang up because we're doing it. And done, been doing it. Can we do more? Sure. Well, in what way that I can do? Do I believe in low income housing? I believe in low income housing. Where are we going to put it? I don't have the money. I think it's inherently problematic that this is group is having that conversation. No one from this group lives in low income housing. Right. No one, no more. No one in this group lives in low income housing. That's right. So well, yes, you're having a conversation. Yes, my wife and I. Right, right but that conversation <laughs> is from your perspective, the perspective of the people in this room, and who's not in this room. Right. Right. So no question. I, I have a very different. Them. I have a very different uh, concept of mold, which I've lived with most of my life because I live on the coast. Than uh, some of those folks over in the, in the subsidized housing and the way they're handling mold over there, the extent of the mold. So it might be interesting to get a perspective, different perspective on mold, but we do know what mold is. Right. You know of it, like, yeah, but, but, I understand your point, but you know what you know as Frank. You don't know what you don't know as some of the people who are being directly impacted by these things. And I think that's inherently what the problem is. Yes, you're having conversations about equity, but again, you're having it from the viewpoint of the people sitting at this table. And are you representative of the community of Groton? No. Well, okay, but see, see the thing is, that's, I was. <laughs> well, the thing, the thing that's different about the mold, mold thing, this goes back to when I first came to town, back in the late '60s. Okay, I said at the time, you should never put those four apartments at the end where they're down on the waterfront. They were in the wetlands, pure and simple. There's going to be problems sooner or later. And by God, it took 70 years or 60 years, and we got a problem. They got a mold problem. Why? It's a wet environment. Right. Should have never been put there in the first place. Right. And is anybody talking about planning and zoning or the building inspector of this whole stuff? I mean, you can get me started here. Mm -hmm. No, but I have to. I, mean, I I hear what you're saying. But I'm, you're right. 
the implication you see I'm not sure that I need to talk to somebody that's in or have somebody sitting here at the table that lives in what is it, Bradford Manor or whatever the name is, um, to understand the problem and understand the need to act on the problem. There's a benefit to that, yes, but I don't know that I uh, it would change the way I would be dealing with it. Um, and when you say to me, because the uh, affront is, when you say to me, you can't possibly understand it because you haven't lived it, um, that makes a hell of an assumption on the other guy's part. We've been around mold for a long time. I think, we, I think we've gone off a little bit on a tangent. No, but that's what I meant about, I didn't mean ignore it from the sense of ignoring the issue. I don't need a bureaucrat telling me how to deal with the problem. No, but you do need a group of people that have diverse backgrounds. Oh, yeah. And but... diverse skill sets. Yeah, sure, fine. And diverse perspectives sure. on it. And, no, and, no and question. I think without debate, we are not a diverse group. Right. Without debate. I mean, come on. One of the things that, well, that what, has... what do we need for diversity? Like... We're going down a rat hole. Yeah, I, I, I don't want to think about diversity again. We always get into I mean, some. I, I think there's a. It, we have to come back to this. Wait, wait. We have to come back to this because it's yeah. it, it is something that's very important because it depends on who we who get who who we get attract to come on board and join us as a group. I mean, frankly, my experience in getting people to 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 join these kinds come of night, right. is really tough. Um, but I think there's a, a very important point here, and we don't yeah. have to beat it tonight. But that there's no question of the value of diversity. And, but th there it is. It you may see? be around some particular project or something that where we say, okay, no. our group is too one, you know, too representative. We, we all have expertise in certain things, but let's get somebody that lives in Chronic Bridge or somebody, you know, get get bring in a more diverse group around some particular things to get their perspective. Yeah. But doesn't and I think if we want the entree for education yes. and outreach, that's mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Yes. Yes. absolutely. Yeah. No. Okay. I don't know. That's all I meant. <laughs> okay. Okay. Um, Did you want to go over anything else tonight? I, I am. Um, I don't think we need to. I mean, uh, uh, let me just say one. One. Well, can I just ask you a question? How do you want to wrap up this issue of this evolution to being an advisory group and what skill sets? And what kind of it? I, want to, I don't think I can wrap it up tonight. No, I don't either. But I'm saying, what are the next steps to take? Oh, oh are we going next to, steps? To kind of, I mean, I would think Megan what and John. What do you John, guys think? The next well, I think Megan are? and John should think Pardon? about that. I think Megan and John should think about that for. Yeah, oh, yeah I mean, I, I think. Come up with some ideas. And then I think we should have it discussion about it. But I am very cognizant to Frank's earlier point that you all are not just serving the planning department, right? Like we have some opinions. My head's totally muddled, right? Because in this conversation, I'm hearing some folks saying we should have goals in mind in the path to how to get goals. I'm hearing some people saying there are certain actionable things that we should do. Then there's conversation of more of mm, we should advise and we should be more so just watching what is happening. So like, there's a whole spectrum of things here. <laughs> yeah. that maybe it just it yeah. to be more conversation yeah. about. Uh, you should be confused. Right? How's that? Yeah. Well, I think. <laughs> yeah. I mean. So, I, but I, I like I feel very strongly about this, right? Because I, I want to have a positive relationship with you all. Mm -hmm. And in order to do so, I need to have a good understanding of what that role and relationship is. Because the last thing I want to do is continue patterns that you've expressed that you all have seen before when you feel like you're not being informed of things, right? But I need to know. I can't possibly tell you everything, right? Okay. So like understanding that role is gonna be crucial to me in making sure I am being the conduit of information that you're hoping that I am and not lead to further disappointment. 
to date, you're doing yeah, great. Thank you. Absolutely. Yeah. And but see that we recognize the stovepipe issue. This That's is going to affect all of us. This is the beginning of sort of. This is the beginning of a conversation. Absolutely. But I think happening. I think Megan is making is. things happen and it's Absolutely. it's not going to happen overnight. And so just you being aware yeah. that, that's, but, but, that was an issue. Yeah. And Listen, um, having having been in the government for any oh, town, you have these things. Yeah. Any, having been in the government at both the state level and the federal level and sort of at the ground level here, but at the state level and at the federal level, I've, I've been in programs where they start, there were startups, new, never done it before. And I can tell you, they're, they're just a nightmare to, to Make them happen, you know. Industry, we're here to make money, you know. No, right, no. we're here. To, I'm, no, I'm, I'm just saying, uh, we're here to make money too. <laughs> no, but you see, the, I think I, I think, I think it's inherent that what we're doing is, is is difficult. That's the point, I guess. So I'm okay. Anything else? Let's think. So, like, please, no one say anything. I see progress. I think we're making good work. I do too. Absolutely. I do too. Okay. Um, just um, uh, I, I will be continuing to meet with Megan and and John, and um, um, I'm also continuing to meet with members of the town council and John Burt, uh, as it seems to be appropriate on, on a lot of these things. Um, one of the things I guess goes back to you, Megan, is that um, when they passed the resolution about considering climate change and resiliency and all our decisions. The town council is not doing that. And I don't know how we get that to happen. That's that, that's that's tough. See, that's something that I would lay on us and not on her. Uh, no, uh, no, 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 wait, 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 wait. John Burt. Or John Burt. But I'm saying you, you, you're putting her out there in front of a uh, firing squad. I'm not, no, I'm not. Wait, I haven't said right? that I want you to do that. I'm saying that's what the issue is. And I don't want to put her in a firing squad, <laughs> but we've got to get in front of that firing squad because, yeah. you know, the fact when they take $725,000 and put lights on a junior high school to play sports at night drives me berserk. Uh -huh. And I don't find out about it until after it was a meeting. Okay. I mean, so, but that's not your job, I don't think. That's, yeah, it's not. It that's, is John Burt's job. It is John Burt's and job. And John should. As mm -hmm. overseeing all those departments and the swamp. I get that. That's why he was really glad to have somebody come on board. But sort of have an ear there, like, oh, is this something I should probably get Megan to kind of look at? I mean, that's yeah. what needs to happen, which isn't happening. He's been there for so I mean, they don't even think of those things. And I, right. so I think again, these are just sort of but just trying to crack the nut a little bit. Just and listen John to the media and see yeah. what they need to understand. He, he I mean, it's, it's, it's not some. It's not yeah. easy. Okay. Um, I just want to tell you um, that we had three meetings with the state on the DOT thing. I think they went as well as could be expected. Um, they got the junior team on the uh, on this, I'm afraid. Um, they made, made procedural mistakes that no one should make at the state level. They did. Um, uh, next steps are going to be a, a meeting with the advisory group, which I hope they um, I'm still on, and um, we're going to move forward. I am meeting um, with uh, um, Westerly um, out of the state of Connecticut because they have all of a sudden, but uh, it's open when it comes to our 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 our, our state. So they want to know what about um, meeting um, later with uh, Stonington. So there's some fluff up over some of that stuff. Uh, I've been trying to meet with the uh, folks over in uh, New London as well because they're there's some bumps here that are going to be the road. Um, um, that's all I have. Our next meeting is on February 9th. Um, any other updates anybody wants to throw in without getting too controversial? Same time, 4 o'clock? Hmm? 4 o'clock. 4 o'clock, yeah. This, this <laughs> I think, is a better time for me, from my point of view, is it for you all? Okay. Yeah, but it used to be your dinner hour that got us to quit. <laughs> You're gonna make dinner, Frank. <laughs> You'll um, make dinner, Sarah. But but let me ask if anybody anybody here sees people who are younger, have diverse skills, you think might be interested in doing this thing, let me know. 
I think we should actually ask Andre if he has any suggestions. Yeah, 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 yeah. Well, uh, Andre's a big supporter. Yeah, no, I know. But he also has been out knocking on doors like crazy. And I know, I know, I know. Just to see if he has any thoughts. Yeah. Was he knocking on doors now? Well, has been. Has been. been. That's what it says. To your point about, you know, then you get into Groton City, town of Groton issues, but, you know, you could reach out to EB, you can reach out to some of the big employers and say, is there someone? Yeah, I know. I need your help, Sarah. Trying to get to talk to anybody at Electric Boat or talk to anybody at Pfizer. They don't answer. Their... No, they don't. I mean, it's really tough. And and I mean, I finally got a in into the Navy a little bit now in a way that I hadn't before. Yeah, that's a group we haven't yet. But but I think there's a there's a big group of people. I there. mean, EB has got such a huge incoming population group of engineering, and I mean, you would think. But so does so does uh, yeah, so Pfizer. Yeah, I mean they're you know little little be known to the public is that they're clearing out a lot of space to bring a lot a hundred other scientists in. Mm -hmm. You know that. But I, I I go back to the question on, on equity. I guess uh, um, is they what do we mean by that? Is it equity in terms of issues? And what are, if, if it is, what are we missing? Um, and how do we correct that? Um, if it's equity in, in terms of uh, uh, you know, genetic makeup, whatever, um, how do we correct that and, and constructively? I mean, at one point, the reason that the schools got into all this flap that I got into was that, um, was that quote, diversity or non-diversity, whatever the word was, of... Uh, uh, equal opportunity in schools. And a lot of it had to do with the Navy housing and the mobility of the Navy housing. What it meant from every two years, you got a change in population. Um, what does all of that have to do with our, our mission, resilience and sustainability? And if it does have something to do, how do we correct it or how well, do we work on it? The, the, there are examples. And let me just give you one we've got right now. The heat study that Megan is working on right now will affect um, chronic planes. Chronic planes big time. It also affects our older population spread out throughout the, country, the entire town. I, I don't know. I don't it know. Does. What, I don't know what the story is on Navy housing. You see, not, not, not Navy housing. Not Navy. Navy housing has got their act together. Because but, they pay they pay for the, the cooling, right? Something like that. Yeah, and it's all solar powered now. It's all solar powered, the whole damn place now. I, I couldn't tell that from the article. That was a Trump suit. Go well, ahead. drive past it. <laughs> it, it. It was okay. But, not a good but, article. And that's it. The chronic planes we looked at from a flooding standpoint, and then we're looking at it from a heat standpoint. That's certainly an area. But those, those shacks, you, they're going to, mm -hmm. they can get an air conditioner, but you're going to try to air condition ground because they're just not well insulated. So that's an issue. At the crux of it, if I had to say what my ideal was, and I understand ideals are hard, right? I'm not ignorant to the fact that getting people to volunteer their time, especially when they have a lot of competing demands, families, jobs, all, I get why it's hard to get people in here. You better. I mean, look at you. <laughs> <laughs> but at the end of the day, right, like in my mind, this task force is supposed to help guide, shepherd, correct, criticize, scrutinize the collective climate action for the town. And I think unless this group has a representative background, exactly. as representative as you can be, and I'm talking- I mean, social, age, social I'm representative. Talking age, exactly. I'm talking life experience. I'm talking where you live in town. Oh. Only by having that rep group be truly representative of who lives in Grind are we making equitable decisions. Because like I said before, I would love for you all to help me prioritize. I only have so many hours in a day. There's only so many things that I can take off my list. And so I'm gonna need help trying to figure out what to prioritize. Your all's opinion of what to prioritize might be very different than other people's opinions about what to prioritize. And I feel like that's what we're missing by not having a more diverse group. It's giving people those voices to say, okay, yeah, well, and you know, I don't have an example to use that's like a pet project here, but people are going to have different insights into what is crucial to them 
that unless we have them here having those conversations, we're not giving them the voice to be able to share that. And that's, to me, the biggest problem. I think talking to Andre would be a good idea. Yeah, I think because so. I think, you know, if we go to him with the question of um, representation. Of Happy to do that. I mean, mm -hmm. well, I could tell you, I, 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 it's getting too late on this. Mm -hmm. Because it's, it's very interesting. And they, I guess, the physicist could be criticized from the standpoint of um, absence of sensitivities to the social issue, okay? I don't care who's living in that property if it's gonna flood. It's gonna flood or it's subject to fire or it's too hot, sort of a thing. What we were asked to do initially was basically a physics analysis of the physics of the situation, maybe bugs and bunnies, the biology. You can come at me and tell me, and they, and they did. The quiet plane is particularly sensitive. And that flag was put up because of social concern. But when you look at the elevation, and you look at the flooding potential in the area, it's not, it's not that sensitive. Okay, so we write that off. There are areas that may be subject to flooding the plains that, you know, the, the park area you talked about. So I think that's an it that was a very interesting uh, perspective and uh, uh, a very understandable one. And you say, you know, when I said, I, I, so I don't, to some extent, I don't care about that. Not because I'm insensitive to the social uh, realities, but because from a physical standpoint, flooding is flooding. I think this came up in our conversation with John too, is that, right, when you all were formed, your major task at hand was understand the climate impacts that brought in. Resilience and sustainability. Yes, right? Yep. So you all having tremendous educational background, that was, it was really more of like a, a scientific review. What does the town have to plan for? Now that we're pivoting up here and we're pivoting into implementation, right? Like that changes things. I think a little bit more. And I think that's really like the crux of the discussion. I yeah. think, you know? Yeah. And that's yeah. not at all. I get it. I think that's very reasonable. Yeah. Again, yeah. The, the physicists say that's not at all saying that we didn't miss something because of this perspective. Yeah. Right. right. It may, may be that you say, did you ever think a goddamn mold problem, pick a name, you know, it comes along and say, some of us, Give, give you a broom, take care of the mold problem, you know, sort of a thing. But that looks to be really a problem. You're, at least when you read about it. Say, holy Christmas, I don't think we look a lot, there's a lot of water. I'm going to bring in water. Am I going to increase the potential for mold in the area? I never even thought about that. I thought of wet feet. You know, maybe you don't have to have wet feet. It just has to be the humidity increase because of this, not of the other thing. It's another whole perspective on it. Yeah, right. I mean, I, it would have for that reason been ideal to have a diverse group from the start, <laughs> right? To your point, right? Like yeah. even with the scientific analysis, there's things you're going to miss by not having a diverse group being the ones that figure out how are we going to do this. Yeah. But I think, you know, the inflection point we're having here is it's growing more and more crucial, right? Your all's charge to me is we want action, right? And having that more equitable kind of you know inclusive conversation about yeah. what that means yeah social justice right it's yeah. so much you know it's just it's so important the action can all be directed yeah, at yeah. front and line point yeah. in downtown Mystic. Yeah. and once we at first i think we were sort of looking at higher level kinds of stuff like you know, the big picture stuff now we're starting to refine it a little bit yeah when you get to the operational then then we have all these things that come along this so we, 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 we don't, it's too late to get into geoengineering, but that's another whole I, story. Too. Okay. And, uh, oh, ready to wrap? You ready? Yeah, I am. I'm, I'm listening. Okay. It's move to adjourn. Sarah, Sarah, it's my turn. <laughs> yeah, your turn. I'd like to motion to that we uh, carry this conversation forward to February 9th okay. and that we adjourn for the evening. Second. All those in favor? <laughs> Good. Okay. Thank you all much. Thank you. To the, on Zoom. Thanks, Mickey. You're welcome, and um, I have to tell you, it's beautiful down here, warm. <laughs> it's actually ridiculous. It's raining at 50 degrees, 40 degrees, 30 degrees. Thanks, Maggie.